Okay, so recall from the previous video, our vertex form is in the form of y equals AX, AX minus H plus K. A represents the slope, H represents, HK represents the vertex, which H tell, um, tells us if it's going to move left or right, and K tells us whether how much it's going to move up or down. So let's look at an example. And all of these will be in the shape of a V. So let's start by looking at the, a function. So we have y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 3. So since this, this can also be written as, and we don't, but just so you'll understand, it could be written as x minus 0 plus 3. So this indicates that it's not moving left or right, but it is moving 3 units up. So our transformation would be 3 units up. It doesn't move left or right because we have x minus 0. So what is this going to look like? I'm going to go up 3 units. My slope is 1 because the slope is the coefficient of this. So my slope is 1. So I'm going to go up 3. I'm going to go up 1 and over 1. Up 1 and over 1 on the other side. And I have my absolute value graph sketched. Okay? So what is my domain? Well, remember from the last video, my domain for an absolute value is always negative infinity to infinity. Now my range here has changed. My range, I moved up three units, so my smallest value is three, and then I go towards infinity. My axis of symmetry, remember my axis of symmetry is the imaginary line that cuts the graph in half. And it's also the y-coordinate of my vert, uh, of, in vertex form. So my axis of symmetry is always written as x equals, in this case, is 0. My vertex is hk. So my vertex is h and k. So my vertex is 0, 3. And is this a maximum or a minimum? This is a minimum point because it goes down to the lowest point and then goes back up. So this is a minimum point. Is it a continuous? Yes. Here's a hint. All absolute value functions are continuous. As x goes towards infinity, as x goes towards infinity, y goes towards infinity. As x goes towards negative infinity, y goes towards infinity. Where is it increasing? Just like before, it's gonna, we're going to look at our vertex. So it's increasing from um, where the slope is positive. So it's increasing from 0 to infinity. And it's decreasing from negative infinity to 0. It's decreasing here. And it's increasing there. Now, my solutions, I don't think I talked about this in the last video. My solution is where it crosses the x-axis. So my solution is where it, it crosses or where it touches the x-axis. And where does that happen? It doesn't. So there are no solutions. Okay? All righty. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and do the next problem and come back when you're done. Okay, welcome back. So let's talk about the transformation on this. So I can see that now I am decreasing by 8. So I am going to shift. It's negative 8, so I'm going to shift down 8. Now, this um, two on the outside, we haven't talked about this. We're going to say that this is a vertical stretch because um, A is greater than 2, and you're going to see that, R -S -S -T -R -A -T -C -H. you're going to see that when we graph it. So if you didn't put vertical stretch, don't worry about that part of it. And we see we have a slope of 2. All right, so how do we graph this? We go to negative 8, which I don't have on the graph. That was not very smart, so that's negative 7. Negative 8 is going to be here. And then we're going to go 
because we have a slope of two, we're gonna go up two and over one. Up two, over one. Up two, over one. Up two, over one. We do the same thing on the other side. And that now looks like this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what's my domain? Hey, my domain for all absolute value functions is negative infinity to infinity. Everybody better get that right on the test. My range, my lowest y value is negative eight, and we're going to infinity. Emphasis. Axis of symmetry. So remember my axis of symmetry, because we can write this as two, absolute value of x minus zero minus eight. So my axis of symmetry is once again zero. My vertex is zero, negative eight. And this is a minimum. It's a continuous, all absolute value functions are continuous. My end behavior as x goes towards infinity. So as I go towards this, my y value goes towards infinity. And my as I go towards negative infinity, I'm still going towards infinity. Where is it increasing? Again, it's gonna increase from zero to infinity, because that's where my slope is positive. So this is increasing. And this is decreasing. And it's decreasing from uh, negative infinity to zero. And that's a parenthesis. Okay, now this one's a little different because now I have something inside the absolute value. So this is gonna shift it. Remember I, I said uh, if it's negative, if it's minus the value, it shifts it to the right. What's inside the absolute value always does the opposite. It always um, does the opposite of what you think. So this subtraction actually moves it one unit right. And my slope is one. So it's not moving it, so I can look at that as plus zero. So I'm only moving one unit to the right. And I didn't move up or down. And then I am going to go, the slope is one. So I'm gonna go up one over one. And I draw my curve. Okay, once again, domain. My range, my lowest y value is zero. My axis of symmetry. Now my axis of symmetry changes here because now my axis of symmetry is this imaginary line. Let's get a different color because I'm having a hard time seeing that. I don't know if you are. It's this imaginary line that cuts this in half. And so now my axis of symmetry is still gonna be this. So my axis of symmetry is x equals one. My vertex is one, zero. And remember I get that from here and here. And this is still a minimum. Is it continuous? All, the answer to all those are yes. Um, infinity and infinity. This is decreasing. This is increasing. Um, so it's de decreasing from negative infinity to zero and it's increasing from zero to infinity. Are there any solutions? Well, where did it cross? Oh, I need to go back and do that one. I don't say solutions here, but where does it cross the x-axis? And the only place it crosses at one, so we only have one solution, and that is x equals one. Uh, let's go up here. Where did it cross the x-axis? Where are my solutions? My solutions are negative, four and four. Okay, so those are my solutions. Negative four and four. 
And on this one is simply x equals one. Okay, on this next problem, we have all kinds of things going on. We have a slope that's not one. We have, um, it's moving left and um, it's moving vertically and horizontally. So let's look at our transformation. So this x plus two, it means it's gonna move two units left. The minus one means it's going to move down one unit. Okay? And my slope is one-third. So let's start by graphing the vertex. So my vertex is going to be negative 2, because I do the opposite of this, I take the opposite of that, negative 2, negative 1. So I do the opposite of this and 1. So negative 2, negative 1. So that would be here. That's my vertex. My slope is 1 third, so I'm going to go up 1 and to the right 3. 1, 2, 3. Up one to the right three. One, two, three. And here I go up one and to the right three. One, two, three. First time I was going left. Up one. One, two, three. And I get something that looks like this. So I can also see that this is a, um, we would call this a vertical shrink because it's not growing as fast also notice that it is wider it's fatter and that's because of the one-third it's fatter so the smaller this number this uh, as long as it's positive it gets fatter what's my domain please tell me my domain is negative infinity to infinity my range, my smallest y value is negative 1. So my range is negative 1 to infinity. My axis is symmetry. I'm going to take the opposite of that 2. So that's x equals negative 2. And remember, it's also the x-coordinate of the, the vertex. Is it continuous? You betcha. As x goes towards infinity, f of x goes towards infinity. As it goes towards negative infinity, f of x still goes towards infinity. It's increasing, so this is decreasing. This is increasing. So it's in, de increasing from negative, in, uh, it's increasing from my vertex, which is negative two, to infinity. It's decreasing from negative infinity to negative two. Do we have solutions? Yes, it looks like there is a solution at 1 and solution at negative 5. So my solutions are negative 5, negative 1. Okay, um, I want you to pause the video and I would like for you to do the next problem. It's got all that wonderful stuff in it and come back when you're done. Okay, welcome back boys and girls. So what's my transformation? I moved two right and six down. So two right, six down. And because this is a three, this is gonna be a vertical stretch. It's gonna be skinny. Okay? So remember, we do the opposite of what's inside. So since it's minus two, Therefore, it's going to be, the vertex is going to be positive 2. And what's on the outside remains the same. Which makes my axis of symmetry is always the same as my x-coordinate. So that's x equals 2. So let's graph this. And my slope is 3. My domain and the range is going to be from negative 6 to positive infinity. But let's graph it and see. So we want to go 2 to the right and 6 down. And then my slope is 3, so I go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1. 
one, two, three, and over one. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And it looks like this. Okay, so my range is going to go from negative six to infinity. And negative six is included. It's a continuous, yep. Infinity, infinity. You're asking, is that ever going to change? Yes, just give me a minute. It's going to change in the next problem. Increasing, decreasing. So increasing from uh, my axis of symmetry, which is two to infinity, and it's decreasing from negative infinity to two. Solutions, where did it cross the x-axis? At zero and four. Okay, so our solutions where it crosses the x-axis. Now I'm gonna do this next one with you because uh, it's slightly different, but it's, it, it's not much, okay? So my transformation, uh, notice that there's nothing inside, so I didn't go left or right, but I did go three up. And my slope is negative one, okay? So this means that this negative means it's gonna be a reflection about the x-axis. In other words, it's gonna be turned upside down. Okay, so we're going to start at 3. Our slope is negative 1, so we're just going to go down because we're negative. And you see it's going to be reflected over the x-axis. Does that change my domain? No, my domain is still negative infinity to infinity because that's my domain for all absolute value functions. My range, now my, my highest y value is 3. So my range now is going to be slightly different. It's going to go from negative infinity to 3. Okay? It's going from negative infinity to 3. Okay, my axis of symmetry is still this imaginary line that cuts it in half. So this is still my axis of symmetry, which is x equals zero. My vertex is zero, three. And now this is a maximum. That's not gonna change, it's always continuous. The end behavior, as, now as x goes towards negative infinity, so as x goes towards infinity, so as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, where, where's my y going? It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It's going towards negative infinity. And the same thing here. As x goes towards negative infinity, this is going towards infinity. Now, this is increasing and this is decreasing. So now it's increasing from negative infinity to zero and it's decreasing from zero to infinity. My solutions, it seems like I have a solution at negative three and three. Okay? All right, so here is the real test. You're gonna pause the video and you're gonna do this very last problem. There's lots of things going on. So let's see, um, just try your best on, on, this, on this particular problem. Okay, welcome back. So what's my transformation? Well, it's moving four to the right, because it's negative. So it's moving four right, four units right. It's moving one unit down. It's negative. So it's reflected about the x-axis. So it's reflection over the x-axis.
and it's one half, so it's going to be a vertical, vertical shrink, which means it's going to be fatter. It's going to be fatter than, than the others, more wide. Alrighty, so I have a slope of negative one half. My domain is still negative infinity to infinity, and we're going to graph it to find the range. So let's start by finding the vertex. Our vertex is 4, negative 1. So I'm going to start at 4, and then go down negative 1. My axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. Right, that's not right. x equals 4. x equals 4. And my slope is negative one half, so that means I'm going to go down one and to the right two. I'm going to do that right, down one and over two. Down one, over two. And I'm going to do the same thing here, go down one, over two. And now my graph looks like this. Yay! Okay. So is it continuous? Yep. My end behavior, both of them are going towards negative infinity. This is increasing. This is decreasing. So it's increasing from negative infinity to 4. And then it's decreasing from 4 to infinity. My solutions. When, when does it cross the x-axis? It doesn't, so there are no solutions. Okay? All righty. Um, that's it for that particular lesson. This lesson does have three videos, so let's pause the video and come back and watch the last set of 